Yo, what's up, Grind Gang? Welcome to episode 15 of the Daily Grind. Today is kind of like a two for one, if I'm telling you the truth, man. I started off by talking a little bit about my morning, what was going on with like habits and just habit reconstruction. That was just something that was really, truly like out of my subconscious and on my mind today. But then we broke off into the intended conversation of the day, which is vibrational scale, man. And just how do we move up and down that vibrational scale? What do things do to affect where we're at on that vibrational scale? All of that, man. And uh, as a really, really powerful conversation, exciting. Uh, I know you're gonna enjoy it. Thank you so much for coming by. And as always, we'll see you again tomorrow. I love you so much. Peace. What's up, boy? What's up, man? What you gonna do today, man? What you go? Oh, shit! Today is February 14th. Boy, I know what today is. Do y'all know what today is? Grind gang! You say, yep. It's that day, boy. I'm not gonna shout it out yet. I'm gonna wait till more people get in here. I'm not gonna shout it out yet. But I know what day it is, boy. I know what day it is. Can't wait to hear that. Yeah, I know, right? We're throwing out right now, man. You mess with the fro? You got to go. Yeah, we're throwing out right now. Oh, I haven't done much anything. Man, I'm on a weird morning routine right now, man. I'm on a mere, weird morning routine. I, uh, y'all see me in my stories. I woke up this morning and did the whole, like, run to get the coffee joint. Uh, so, like, that was the first thing this morning. Like, my whole mind was just like, oh, we're out of coffee. And so I was like, fuck. And so I sat around for a little while, and then my brain was just like, you gotta go find some of this shit. Like, you gotta go get some. And so I went and went to get some. What's up, Flex? Flex Zeppelin in this bitch. Hey, grind gang forever, boy. Hey, much love, man. I wish I'd shout you out this morning. I totally didn't think of you, but I'm thinking of you now. Much love, man. Hey, love, Jesse Jess. How you doing? So yeah, I woke up, ran straight to the thing to get the coffee, and it just got me thinking again about my habits and like how we just how we do things. You know, we just we just be doing shit. Yeah, we just be doing this shit. Like we as human beings, we just be doing shit. Yeah, we just be doing this shit. I swear to God, we just be doing it. Like, we don't even know what we be doing half the time. We just be winning. Like, it was raining. It was like cold as fuck. I had meditated. I wasn't even like, I just barely threw on some shoes. I was like, mm, where's my shit? And it was like I was moving on autopilot. I was just like, I gotta get my shit. I'm gonna walk across the wall. My brain just solved the problem. Like, it, it's so weird because on a conscious level, like, who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Like, I drink coffee every single morning. Why does it matter that one day I don't have some? You know what I mean? Like I was just like, not, not like, you know, a lot, a lot of times you use coffee as a tool and you're like, well, it's gonna give me energy and it's gonna give me whatever. I don't need any of that shit today. Like I don't really got anything to do today. So I was just like, whatever, no coffee. Not that big of a deal, right? Like I like it, but you shouldn't have to have things. Like that's the thing I don't like about a lot of the habits that I have right now in my life is that I gotta do them. Like it just has to happen. And that's just a weird place. That's like being a slave to something, you know, that's like, giving control over who you are, what you are, what you do today, to some, to, to some other external circumstance or some other thing. Honestly, not what I'm talking about today, but it was just interesting because like, that was, um, you know, that was just how my morning was. And so now it's kind of throwing off the rest of my morning. You know, I went to do that thing, came back, I did meditate, and then, um, but I didn't go to the gym, and then now I like did my gratitude, but everything's all out of whack, like everything's all out of order. Still have to go to the gym. I'm all alive now. I'm not supposed to do that till afterward. It's just all weird and combobulated. And uh, that's why I like the routine, man. That's why I love a morning routine. It's like, when you first wake up out of bed, guys, you really just don't feel like it. I know, you've been in a state of rest for like eight hours straight, right? And then now you gotta kick all your systems back on, you gotta turn your brain back on, you gotta turn your body back on. You know, I always imagine there's just this guy in the morning, you know, who just like, he wakes up and he just comes in and just like, You know, he's just like punching shit in the computer. Wake up in about seven minutes. Flip one of these on. Go ahead and make it cold in the room now. And all of a sudden you're just like, you wake up and you're like, man, what the fuck is cold here? You know, and then now you're awake. But there's like this little guy, I don't know what his name is yet. I'm gonna name him Jim right now. Jim walks in every morning, turns on my shit, but Jim's not in a great mood in the morning. Like Jim's not just bebopping into work. Like he doesn't just come bust up into work. Like, yeah, bitches, it's time. Hey.
you know, he doesn't do that. He's like slow, he's making his coffee, he's flipping on the switches, he's playing around on Instagram, on the computer and shit, fucking off, like not really doing his job. And so that's why the morning routine is so powerful for me, man, is it gives me this time to really get in the flow. It's to get Jim motivated in the morning. Be like, all right, Jim, come on, man. You know, like I get in there, so now Jim's in there and then I come in, you know, I sit down in my meditation space and that's me going deep into my brain and I sit down with Jim and we have like a little morning meeting. I'm like, all right, Jim, look, this is what I need you to do, man. First of all, you need to get it bumping in here. Like, let's turn the music up in this motherfucker. Let's, let's crank the energy. I need some more energy, but Jim, and Jim's like, oh, oh shit, okay, my bad, man. Wop, and he like lands all the levels and I'm like, okay, all right. I'm like, cool, that's cool, Jim. Now this is what I also need you to do, Jim. Like, Jim, we got a big task today, man. You know what I mean? Like. You see that pretty girl, Jim? I really want to say something to that pretty girl. Or like, I really want to get this promotion, Jim. So today, I need you to really be focused. I need you to really be on your shit, man. I need you to be making great decisions. I need you to be operating a full, you can't be falling asleep on the job today, Jim. Today, I need you to be focused and excited. And so I inspire that little guy who turns all my switches on in my brain. <coughs> today, we fought. <laughs> today, Jim won, right? Today, Jim was like, nah, bitch. We need coffee. I'm not doing. I'm not doing shit till you get me coffee, bitch. Nope. Nope. And I'm just like fucking a Jim. God damn it, Jim. Jim. I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Though? That's how it's like. That's how it's like. <coughs> and so, you know, we talked about this a couple days ago about your subconscious as a baby. And so this guy Jim that I'm talking about, this dude's not like. He's a kid. You know, Jim's like a like a seven year old. You know, like the seven-year-old who's in control of all your shit. Like, control all your switches, controls your whole body today. Your whole, your whole existence today is controlled by this little seven-year-old named Jim. <laughs> and so, it's just so important to sit down with Jim, for Jim to have like a routine. That's what they say about kids too. They're like, when are kids most happy? When they have a solid routine to follow. Now it's play time. Now it's sleep time. Now it's eat time. You know, but they know what's going to come next and they know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Same thing with Jim. Jim likes to be in a flow. Jim will work a lot better, honestly, if he does the same thing every day. If Jim comes into work every day at seven, he's gonna be like, he's more prepared when he gets there. He's like, yeah. you know what I mean? He did all his fucking bullshit before he showed up, before he even woke up. So funny, so funny. Talk to Jim today. Nonetheless, that was my morning, threw me off, but now we're here live, doing the daily grind. This is number 15. I wanna say it's number 15. I'm pretty sure it's number 15. Which is fucking dope. D guys, whether you liked them or not, you know, whether you thought it was good, whether you watched them or not, I don't know what you did with them, but all I know is me in person, like I did my job. For the last two weeks straight, two weeks straight, I did not miss a single day. I've been on this live stream every single day for at least 30 minutes for two straight weeks. God, that's powerful, man. That's powerful. That's exciting. You know, so much of us, we get caught up in like the glamour of things, right? Like if we don't, if we don't have a thousand people come on our show, then we don't have a show. It's like not real. We're like, if you don't make money from your art, right? If you're not making like a lot of money, like if your art doesn't pay your bills, people act like their art's not important. They're like, oh, well, I'd love to be an artist, but I gotta pay my bills. And so like, you know, art, you know, I don't have time to be fucking around and just talk to eight, 10, 15 people. Like, I don't got time for that. It doesn't make me no money. Nah. It's a losing mentality if you ask me. I love this, like this is it, this is it. Why am I Rod the Planner? Why do I, why, why? This is it, this is fun for me. This is exciting. It was exciting for the people that I, that intertake with it or interact with it, you know? A lot of people reach out to me and they're like, yo, I love your shit, it's working and it's helping me or it's doing this and so, that's cool, that's all I care about. You know, you come in just as hard, but if you're always like, if you're always like, oh, I'm gonna I'm do it when I get big. When I get big, then I'll be consistent. Like when I can get away from my job, then I'll be consistent. Or, you know, whatever. When, I, when this is right for me in my situation, then I'll really go 1,000%. And then it'll matter. Like, bitch, you're never gonna get there. You're never gonna get there until you can just go 1,000% just because you fucking love to, just because this is just what you wanna do. And so, whether it looks like a lot to you or not, or whatever, like, this is me fulfilling my dream. You know what I mean? This is me taking a small step every single day to be more of a person I wanna be. Um, and then it grows, and then it'll grow. Over time, you get better, and you learn, and you adapt, you know? Like, we look, we've changed our camera angles, and you know, I've gotten more, uh, I'm gonna start varying my topics a lot more, and start talking about like a lot broader things, like money. You ain't never heard me talk about money on this channel, but it's so funny because Americans, like just the richest country in the world, has the worst education when it comes to money. Like, the worst financial education of, of anything, I feel like. You know what I mean? That's how I personally feel. 
Now, obviously, I'm biased. I grew up here in America, but like, I just look around and people in America just don't know how to use their money. Like, it's not even a thing. Like, they didn't even teach you that in school. They literally didn't. You had one class, it was called economics. But where was your personal finance class? I don't understand how we could go through life. Money is our number one, you know, everybody, oh, I want money. I gotta have money, money's so important. You know, we come out here and we pretend like money is important in our society, yet nobody wants to study it or learn anything about how it works. Where it goes, where it comes from, how, how do you make more of it, any of that, none of that. None of that. How, many, how many dollar bills does the US print a year? I don't know either. That's crazy to me though that we don't know that, right? So I'm gonna start talking about other topics like money and about like, you know, time management, about how do you build a successful business? You know, that's great. You got like all these vibes and stuff, but like, how do you honestly market yourself to where people wanna like listen to what you got to say or see what you got to say? Hey, Elise, I love you. Hey, how you doing, girl? I'm so excited to see what you come up with. Hey guys, everybody go check out Elise right now. She's an amazing filmmaker. She's working on some cool things with Mod Sun right now and uh, doing some other cool things, I'm sure, down there in San Diego, right? I believe it's San Diego. Anyway, she's a really cool filmmaker. Uh, I got to meet her a couple days ago and that was a really, really cool experience. So, nonetheless. Um, but facts, big facts. You know, I wanna just branch out. I feel like there's a lot more advice, a lot more topics that I've studied besides just, you know, what's a good vibration and how to use the law of attraction. Um, so I'm gonna start branching out and all that stuff. <clears throat> but the point is, today, if you wanna grow or you wanna build something for yourself, first get consistent, you know? First, just show up to work every day. Then worry about how you're gonna get better, right? First, just set the goal to go to the gym. If you've never been to the gym before, you're not just gonna walk in there and just start doing this like massively insane workout every single day forever. You know what I mean? Like, this is, like a new habit doesn't get built like that. You don't just like hop into the gym and be like amazing all of a sudden. Set the just goal of like, I'm just gonna go to the gym. Just every single day, no excuse, no matter what. Even if I just have to stop by the gym for 10 minutes on my way home and just be like, I'm in here. This is gym time. We're doing the gym right now. Like, you know what I mean? But like that consistency, you can only stand, you've heard me talk about this before. You can only stand in that gym for so long before you're gonna like, let me do a couple push-ups. Since I'm here, let me just do a couple push-ups. You know, since I'm here, since I'm already in this vibration of the gym, I might as well do something. And then you get some cool feelings from that, right? Maybe you don't, maybe you fucking hate it, but you show up again tomorrow anyways, right? And after time, your brain will make that a pleasurable experience. You'll start to learn the things that you love about it. You'll start to be more motivated, more inspired. You know, it'll just become a habit. Like I said, you'll just show up at the gym just because that's what you're supposed to do right now at this time, and then you'll get something out of it, right? So small daily disciplines, that's right, Jess, that's right. <coughs> cool, that's all great, that was fun. That was an extremely fun conversation that was really just like straight out of my subconscious mind. Like, that's just something I was dealing with this morning, like something I'm dealing with in general is uh, uh, a reconditioning, a re-manipulation of my habits. And um, I think I'll talk more about that here in the future, like a couple days about why it's so important about that, just self-monitoring and about understanding like why you do what you do. You know, why do I make decisions I make today? Like, what is the driving force behind whatever I'm gonna do today? You know, like, go, go, deciding to grab my keys, grab my wallet, throw on a jacket and shoes, walk out my front door, walk downstairs, walk across the street. I ran, actually, because as soon as I got outside, I was like, fuck, it's raining, and then I ran. So I ran across the street, went to the, why? Who does that? Who decides that? You think that's what I planned to do with my day yesterday? I didn't plan that, you know what I mean? I woke up and my brain instantly reacted to the idea that we had no coffee. Instantaneously was like, oh shit, we have a problem. Alarm bells went off and we're like, stop everything. Don't worry about what kind of vibe you wanna have today. Don't think about the grind gang. Don't think about positivity, none of that. We're not gonna think about any of that right now because right now you have an addiction that needs to be fed. That's crazy, man. That's crazy that your brain can just hijack your whole, your whole existence real quick. And so you gotta really monitor that stuff and ask yourself like, what is hijacking my existence? And when it does hijack my existence, what is it making me do? Does it make you flip out and, ah, oh, you fucking bitch, I fucking hate you, ah! You see people like this, I'm like, yo, bro, like, where the fuck did that come? Like, what, whoa, whoa. You know, and it's just like, it seems like that's in them though. Like that's that subconscious mind, he's just doing whatever the fuck he wants to. So you really gotta monitor and say, you know, what is what gives me my impulses and what kind of impulses are they? Um, if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna take this shirt off. It's hot and it's like annoying the fuck out of me. So we're just gonna. <coughs> what are we talking about today? 
What are we talking, the vibrational scale. Hey guys, so from here on out, I hope y'all have an amazing morning. I'm actually gonna talk for a little while more, but I'm gonna actually shoot myself in the foot in a weird kind of way. I hope that you guys still stick by, but this will honestly be a conversation that's gonna look better on the YouTube. Um, I'm gonna have an infographic and everything, like we're gonna show the vibrational scale. It's gonna come up here on the screen and talk about the differences and all that stuff. So right now is an oral conversation that I highly suggest that you follow up on. Hell, stay on here and hear, about it, hear me explain it and then go watch it again and just scroll through till you start seeing the, the infos come up and stuff. <coughs> okay, yesterday we talked about what makes my vibration, what creates my vibration. You know, like our physical body and the way we use it will create our vibrations. Um, the, the, the thoughts that we think, the thoughts that Jim thinks this morning, the way Jim's gonna act and behave today will influence your vibe. That'll influence your vibe a fuck ton, right? We just said you could be spazzing out and not even know why. That's Jim. Jim just spazzing out. So you have a spirit, you have a physical, you have a mind, right? The thoughts and things that go in and out of our brain. And then you have an emotional. How you feel right now about, you know, your situation or your, your life. You know, emotions give us this perspective. It's really weird. Like right now I'm working on a camera right now that has a really cool lens, right? And, and emotions to me is always like decides how focused that lens is or what that lens focuses on. You know, if you're really happy, you're really positive, you're really excited about today, um, you're gonna focus on some different things. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna have a different frame of mind, a different perspective, as compared to if you have like the thought of like sadness or depression or heartbreak. You know, you're gonna have a different perspective on today, a different frame for the day, right? That has so, so much to do with your vibe. Guys, your emotion, you know this, you know this. Are you the same person when you're sad or depressed or heartbroken or you just lost your job or anything? When you're sad, are you the same person you are when you're happy? No, no, not even close. You're not even gonna take the same actions. You're not even gonna make the same moves or nothing. And what we talked about yesterday with your vibes, right? Is just like on anything else, like certain people vibrate in a certain way physically, right? Maybe they don't move their body very much or their body's in a lot of pain or something, right? They're, phys they're vibrating at that certain, certain state or frequency. Same thing, some people are, are vibrating at a natural emotion constantly, right? Like we have like a baseline emotion, I think. It's like, a, it's like our natural vibration. It's like, we're, we're, like if, if vibrations move in a range of frequencies, sometimes you can vibrate higher or faster or slower or whatever, there's like an average, like a median place that you vibrate on the emotional scale. So we all are not excited, right? Like I'm a naturally excited person. Like that's something about me, like I'm always just like, ooh. So I'm about to pop off. I don't know what yet, but other people are real chill, real calm, real like um, stoic, right? Not that they're not happy. It's not that they're not great, but they just have a different type of like vibe, physical, emotional, spiritual vibe. <coughs> All great, right? But each emotion has its own identified vibrational number, I guess, frequency. And they've broken it all the way down, all the way from enlightenment, like enlightenment being like the way, as, as Buddhism calls it, but just like a complete and total understanding and peace with the world, right? That's enlightenment, it's just, you, you definitely know where you fit into this whole little scheme of things and, and you're operating from that place peacefully and lovingly, right? And then you have a lot of other really positive emotions underneath that, you got joy, you got happiness, or love, you got um, like excitement, positive expectation, but as you start to go down, they start to get a little more mediocre, so we move down from like positive expectation to maybe just like acceptance, like boredom, you know? And then boredom kind of turns into like pessimism, and then maybe pessimism turns into like anger or pride or courage or something like that. And then those turn into like despair or you know, whatever. And then despair turns into like shame and grief, you know? But like shame and grief are the bottom. Like shame is like the lowest form of vibration that you could abs like possibly feel, right? And some people live that though. Like some people's natural vibration is shame. They did something a long time ago that they haven't been able to let go or that they still feel guilty for. And that they, like, you know what I mean? Like they have some kind of insecurity in their mind that says that they're not good enough. And so they have this weird shame. They feel like I'm not good enough. I'm not whole. I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not a good thing or not a good person or whatever. And that's like one of the lowest vibrations you can have, right? Is this emotional idea of I'm not worthy. Um, boredom can turn into arts and crafts depending on what you do with your vibe, right? If you want to raise your vibrations, then like I guarantee you they'll turn into something like that. But you ever notice some people be bored as fuck? My cousin or my nephew's on here and I hope he's still on here, but one of my nephews be like, I'm bored. Or they just, I'm always, I'm bored. My son does it. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm like, well, do something then. Then unboard yourself. What do you, what do you want? What are you, what are you waiting for? 
Like, I don't stand what I'm supposed to do because you're bored. Like, make up something to fucking, like, what would I do if I was bored? What would you do, right? But some people won't. They just sit around and be in that vibration. Like, that's their natural state. I am bored. I am uninspired. Well, yeah, because you're just vibrating at bored. You're not even doing anything to try and raise your vibrational level to something else that's a little more fun or exciting. You know, I tell my nephew, I'm like, or my son, go outside. Like you said, arts and crafts. Pick up a pen. Make a video. Do something. But you can't just sit around and be like, I am bored. Take me to Chuck E. Cheese. The world is boring. They're not making this fun enough for me. But people do that. People walk around all week talking about how their life is boring. I'm like, that's your fault. Unboard yourself. <laughs> you know, right? But we don't take control of where we're at in vibrations. I don't want to talk about other people, though. I'm going to talk about myself. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you about where I started on the vibrational scale, where I feel like I'm at now, and the different things that I did to get up there, and the different like steps I feel, the stages I felt like I really moved through, and then some other interesting things about why I've kind of um, fell back on some of the other habits that I, that I do that I don't think are bad necessarily, but tie into this little vibrational scale in an interesting way. So um, I'm going to take you all the way back to like 15-year-old me. Like 13, 14, 15 year old me. I have always been ambitious as fuck. Extremely ambitious. I've never been a sad guy. Never been a particularly angry dude. We talk about I can't hold grudges to save my life. Like that's just not in my, my vibration ability. Like my natural vibration won't allow me to do things that are like very, very low on the scale. Cause I'm just not that. I'm like naturally, naturally I, I vibrate at this level right here, which is about, one third of the way up of the scale, okay? And that, that emotion is called desire. I have enormous amounts of desires. Desire to be rich, desire to be successful, desire to make an impact, desire for today to be better than it was yesterday. Like, my desire burns so deep within me that it drives me. And you're like, well, that's great, no, no, that's good. You're ambitious, Rod, you should wanna be there. Why, why is that not a good place to be on the vibrational scale? Well, first of all, I wanted to, to just caveat this. There is no bad place to be on the vibrational scale. You just are there or you're not there. You're either here or you're there. You're either down here or you're there. Sometimes you'll vibrate here. Like if I gave you a million dollars, you're gonna vibrate in joy for an ex like a certain period of time. I don't know how long that period of time will be, but the stimulation of a million dollars could raise you all the way from grief, all the way to, one thing that makes me ambitious is three stripes and a check mark. Yeah, oh, you could have definitely invented that. You will invent that if you get on it right now. Because it's so simple, right? It's just an idea. But nonetheless, my point being, you're, you're vibrating here, right? Or whatever. This just is. Sometimes you'd be really, really high. And then sometimes I get bored. It's not like I don't get bored. You know what I mean? Or sometimes I fall down to sadness or grief or depression. Y'all seen me there not so long ago, right? <coughs> so here I was, desire. Um, the problem with desire. The problem with desire being your, your primary vibrational point is that inherently what you're saying to yourself and to the universe, to your mind, all these things is, is I'm, not, I'm not enough though. Like, like, I'm a, I'm like I'm cool, but I'm not enough. And that was me. Like I've never been content or happy. You know, I've always been on a drive, on a mission, like gotta get it done. And on a lot of times on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm grateful for where I'm at but it burns me inside that I'm not rich and successful and famous, all that stuff, you know what I mean? Like some people are okay with that. They're like, well, that's not important. Fuck you, how about that? Like, that's just how I feel. Like that is important to me. I'm here to make an impact. I'm here to reach as many people as I possibly can on this earth. I know that, that's great. But if you let your desire consume you, right? If you just be at that vibration, there's, it's so hard to feel joy. It's so hard to feel peace. That's the, that's, so now let me tell you where I'm at now. Now I'm at love. Extremely high vibration. Extremely high. And you can tell, right? You can tell, how much do I tell you I love you? Every fucking day? And you're a stranger. I don't even know you. And I'd be like, oh, I love you. And I mean it. You know it, you can tell. Look at my face, you can tell. I'd be like, you can tell, like, if, if you was in a room with me, I would love you for real. Like, you would feel that love coming off of me. That's my vibration. That, like, naturally, I'm just always like, when people fuck up or when people do something wrong, I vibrate at love. So I don't be like, him, get him. Fuck this guy, we got rah! You know, like, I'm always like, well, you don't know what they're going through. You know, I'm always like making excuses for them and stuff, and I'm like, but you don't know what, you know, you don't know how they got there, or you don't know what their circumstances are. Maybe this, uh, dude, I'm telling you, I should have been a defense attorney, because I'll, I'll argue for the worst of them. I'll argue, I'll argue for the worst of them. 
I stand, I've stood in a room and argued for pedophiles before of why people don't understand what they're going through, right? And you're like, what? But that's just because I vibrated love. So it's really hard for me to blame or shame or, or persecute people because that's just not love. You know what I mean? Love is a vibration of love. And so you only feel that kind of vibration. I've trained and manipulated myself over so much time that I vibrate right like love. Like love is top for me. That's like good day. And then when I'm like not feeling so good, I kind of fall down to like content. You know? Like bad days for me are content. On, on my worst of days, I'm just like, you know, we're here, man. We're here, we're doing the damn thing. And uh, one day you're gonna be as successful and rich and powerful and all those things you wanna be as you wanna be. Like one day that's gonna be there for you. Um, and then, so I'm just kind of content with today. <coughs> All fine, right? All fine. Um, but enlightenment's the top, right? Enlightenment's a full peace, conscious understanding of how the universe and you work together, how you work in the universe. And you want to be there, right? It's like, it's like heaven on earth, they say. I'm at love, which is like two down, right? You got enlightenment, peace, love, joy. Those are top four. Um, I'm usually right there, joy and, joy and love. You can tell, right? You can see it on me. Like, I'm usually happy, and I'm usually really, really in love with somebody. Whether it be romantic or, you know, like as a friendship or whatever. Um, I can't reach enlightenment. I won't, you will never hear me say I'm enlightened. Like, I don't, I don't go around and tell people I'm enlightened. I don't feel like I have all the answers. I don't feel like I figured it out yet. Why? Well, because there's still so much desire in my heart. Like I'm still so not at peace with who I am right now because of the things that I have not accomplished in the world, right? Just, just in the world, just in like coming, like I've done so much for my own vibrations and that feeling of love and positivity inside of me and that's all great. But I've been unable to extinguish that desire. And so that desire, my original vibration, right? Still in the smallest of ways is holding me back from my ultimate potential because Today, if I really want to, if I really want to, like manifesting out of love, that's beautiful. And it's not like I'm going to get bad things or experience bad because I'm manifesting out of love. But if I really wanted to get the best, you know, the most out of today, I would be really content with who I am right now and where I'm at in my journey. And understanding that, you know, this is a part of it. And that, that you know, like ultimate peace. It's really hard to find enlightenment until you've reached ultimate peace. And then it's kind of hard to find ultimate peace, right? If you're struggling to pay your bills every month. Or if you, you know, whatever, you're not like financially stable or, you know, like sometimes you don't know where you're going to eat. Like that's really difficult to reach that fully enlightened state. And so I, I know that. That's okay. I'm here at love and, I'm, and now I'm, I'm working on letting go of my desires, right? It's okay to have ambition, I tell myself, but I got to be okay with this. I got to be okay with talking to 10 people for the rest of my life because you don't know. It could just end up being this. I could end up never making it to another level. It happens to millions of people. Millions of people have dreams and wishes to be successful and famous and rich and all that stuff. And it just doesn't happen for some people. But it doesn't mean that they don't end up having an amazing life. Right? And so I have to learn to be content with that. I can still come out and strive every day to be the best that I can be. But I can't set a standard for myself and say, well, if I don't have a million dollars or if I don't have this, then I'm not okay. Right? And from what I've gathered on the vibrational scale, guys, it starts with fully positive, fully full a spirit full to the top that you can never want or need or desire or anything. you just content, heaven on earth. Then you just start putting in lack. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't feel this. I don't, you know, and then you just start taking out of that vibration. You start falling lower on the scale. And you start going down to like, you know, you start being pessimistic. You start talking shit about people. That's going to start knocking you down a little bit on that vibrational scale. You know, you're going to start vibrating lower just naturally. Right? We just talked about it. It's in your vibration. You're just naturally going to start... Falling down a little bit. You find yourself being bored more often. Like all of a sudden now you're bored more often because you've instilled some limiting beliefs in the fact that like, whatever, so-and-so couldn't get it. So-and-so's music sucks. Well now your brain's like, well, our music kind of sucks too, man. And so now you're not as inspired to take action. And so now you're bored because you're not taking any action, right? And then that boredom, that boredom starts to like piss you off a lot. You're like, man, you start getting mad at life because life's so boring. And so what you do, now you start vibrating at something else like anger or pride, or whatever, you start going lower. <coughs> so, all that's to say is what I want, this is what I want you to leave with. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to take from today's conversation. Okay? Right now you're vibrating somewhere. And remember, like I said, if you need, if you need to, just Google vibrational scale or come back to the video. But right now you're somewhere on this scale. We all are. 
Um, you might be really, really high, joy, love, peace, enlightenment for all I know. Um, or you might be really, really low at shame, grief, wherever. I want you to know that you can move any direction you want to today. I'm of the conclusion that attraction is not really understood in any depth by most people. Now, I've studied this every day for 50 some years. And I can assure you, attraction is a law, but it's a secondary law. The primary law is the law of vibration. Your brain is an electronic switching station. Your brain does not think, but you think with your brain. There's a difference. As you activate brain cells, you set up a vibration in your body. For me to just move my hand like that, I had to activate brain cells or my hand wouldn't have done it. Vibration is something that must be understood if you're going to take control of your health. It must be understood if you're going to take control of your relationships. It must be understood if you want to become wealthy. The vibration you're in is going to dictate what you attract into your life. And if you're troubled, you're worried, you're going to attract a lot of bad energy. That's why the great sufferer in the Bible said, Lo, the thing I fear has come to visit upon me. Well, fear is a very negative vibration. It's a very negative emotion. It's caused by doubt and worry, and doubt and worry is really caused by ignorance. That's why Solomon said, and all you're getting, get understanding. Vibration is essential to understand, but only one person, maybe 10, has any grasp of it at all. If you ask a person how they feel, what they're really telling you is their conscious awareness of the vibration they're in. If a person says, I just don't feel very well, that person's probably in a very negative vibration. The person says, I feel wonderful. They're in a very good vibration. That's the beautiful truth. We are in control of how we feel. Okay. Any direction you want to. And it starts by you just taking control of your whole vibration, your emotions, your actions, your words, your thoughts, anything that you can, right? Why pose it up? Anything you can do, listening to positive messages, all these things are gonna to start to change your vibrational state. And you start letting go of that, whatever, you, whatever you've identified as your vibration. So if you're a bored person, you start letting go of that. You don't claim you're bored. Well, I'm bored, I gotta raise my vibration in some way. I'm gonna practice some love. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up and dance. That way I can instill some joy and some, you know, whatever into this moment. And then now I went from a, this vibration to that vibration. And then the more you do that, the more you just, Jim gets used to that, right? Jim gets used to being at this vibration or this emotion. It's really hard to make me mad. It's so ridiculously hard to make me mad. I get there sometimes, trust me. People piss me the fuck off sometimes and I'll, I'll go in on you. I've, I've been known to go in on people, but it's just so much harder. Back in the day, Boy, I had a switch like that. Boy, I just flip on your ass in a heartbeat. Say some shit I didn't like. Say some shit that I thought was dumb. Whatever, and I'm arguing with you, trying to get at you, tell you why you're stupid. All because of lack inside my own vibrational scale. Not because you're really stupid or not because of anything, right? Just because I wasn't okay with who I was. I had insecurities about not being successful or not being whatever. And all these insecurities hold us back and they hold us at this low vibration. Um, so, last thing I said is like, you have control, right? And so, I worked on that for years, guys, years. Remember when I told you, where did I start? I started at desire. How old was I? 15, 13 probably, honestly. 13, immense desire. Here I am at 30, and I've only made it to, to joy, happiness, right? There's a lot of steps in between there, but my point being is like 15 years to go from, you know, a quarter of the way up to all the way up. If you're starting at shame, if you're starting at grief, you know, if you've been grieving the loss of a loved one for four or five years, like you're in a very, 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 very low vibrational state and it is going to be difficult for you to experience joy. You're so far away from joy on the vibrational scale, right? But start working your way up. Fine, get to where you feel bored at least or content. Content might feel really, really good to you at first. After a while you get used to content and then that'll start to listen to joy. So last thing, why did I stop smoking weed? Right? Why, why am I stopping a lot of these things? Uh, I stopped, first I started eating healthy again. I started eating you know, fish, veggies, good healthy foods, like everybody tells you to 
because everybody's right. They're not fucking lying to us. Like it's good for you, good for your body. If you don't want to be sick, if you don't want to be tired, if you don't want to be sluggish, hurt, have a headache, think that, you know, like those things, eating cheeseburgers every day lowers your vibrational state. Just true. It's just true. You eat a plate of veggies, then you go eat a Big Mac and you tell me which one makes you feel better. And I just promise you, you'll feel better on a plate of veggies. So I started doing that. <coughs> next was like weed. When I started smoking weed, man, I was, well actually next was cigarettes. Because again, same thing. What, what am I getting on a positive vibrational scale from smoking cigarettes? Those don't even get you high. At least marijuana gets you high. But cigarettes, you literally smoking a cigarette because you have to. Because, just because you just, because it tells you to. So you go do it. And you're just in this nasty little habit of like, why you smoke? Because I'm smoking. Well, why are you smoking? Because I smoke. Well, why do you smoke? Because I'm a smoker. Why do you smoke? You know what I'm saying? Stupid. So I had to get rid of that. All these things. It's not just physical. I had to get rid of my anger. I had to work with that. I had to like practice patience. If you want to get on a higher vibration, practice that vibration. So every time I get angry, I'd practice patience. You know, I'd say, okay, deep breaths. Deep breaths, you know, and, I, and over time, you know, I blow up less, I blow up less. I had to learn to let go of some of that, like I had a huge ego, and ego holds you down, right? That's pride, that's courage, that's all these things that go into, I'm gonna be the shit one day, y'all don't even fucking know, man, I'm so cool, it's just y'all don't even know yet, you know, it's like, all that ego I had, I had to let go, I let, had to let go of that stuff so that I can move up that vibrational skin. Weed, marijuana, Vibrates at about like a 350-ish or something, right? Which is like kind of right in the middle. It's acceptance. Which, if you think about it, marijuana is like that. Like, you smoke weed right now. Cat Williams said this. There is a chemical in weed that's called f*** it. And, <laughs> and if you could just get that in your system, it could change your life. It really could. He had that joke. He's like, weed has a chemical in it called fuck it. And if you smoke some of that shit, that's what you're going to do. You're going to say fuck it. You're not going to care. you would be like, oh. Can't pay my bills today, but we high, baby. It's cool, you know. Like, you know, it makes you feel okay with whatever situation or thing you're in. That's beautiful. When I was 13, 15, had all this desire, had all like I hated life. I would sleep for like 13 hours, 14 hours a day. Why? Because I need that sleep? No, I was just bored. I just didn't know. You know what I mean? I was completely discontent with my life, so I tried to check out, and I would just sleep. You know, and then when I would wake up, then I would want, you know, we all do that. I, this is exactly how I would describe why I smoked weed. It helped me deal with the mundaneness of life. You know, I hated the, going to my nine to five every day. I hated just like boring at, I still to this day, I hate taking out the trash. I hate paying bills. I hate fucking driving. I hate doing just normal life activities. It's just so fucking boring. And that's because I'm like, no, I have ADHD. I have like dopamine deficiencies in my brain. So what most people considered exciting or normal, like to me, is just not that cool, you know? And so most people can vibrate at content. That was really difficult for me for a long time. Um, and so I started smoking weed, because weed made me feel better. It raised me up that, it raised me from desire all the way to acceptance or contentment. And that was great, that made me feel so awesome. And that's why I loved weed. My grand out here was like, you gotta smoke weed. Weed's the answer. Like, marijuana's just beautiful. God gave it, and it did. God, the universe, whatever, created marijuana so that if you were suffering from something, if you're suffering from stress and grief and anxiety and that's tough, then fine. Do what you have to do to like raise your vibrational scale. But understand why you're doing that. Because now, where do I vibrate? Now I vibrate up here. Now I vibrate at joy and happiness. You know what's underneath joy and happiness? Like reasoning, intellect, and love. Like, re like they say this about uh, Albert Einstein, right? Albert Einstein, they say, resonated at 499, which is like the top of intellect or reasoning. And it makes sense, right? Albert Einstein's like the smartest motherfucker in the world. But why 499? 500 love. And if you know anything about Albert Einstein, he fucking sucked at love. He didn't understand anything about how humans and stuff like, like he wrote letters of just like his most despairing moments where like trying to deal with this ex-lover or mistress that he had and stuff and so he just was not very adept at like loving and communicating that's fine he was still vibrating very high reason but he just never really made it up to like enlightenment or love because he would have had to let go of some of that intellectual reasoning right like if you want to start getting enlightened and you want to move up to peace and joy like you have to start letting go of our physical world like you have to start studying metaphysical things and he didn't want to go there you know he really wanted to stay scientific and work in the world so he stayed at reasoning huh. So, but let's say you're vibrating at reasoning. 
which is dope. You're, you're smart, you're active today, you're trying to build a business, you're trying to do your art. Well now you smoke or you drink alcohol. Alcohol is even funnier. Alcohol goes down to 250, 275, which is like courage. Courage, pride. Is that not what liquor does to you? Is liquor not make you feel like liquid courage, right? Like that's what that's where that, and that's why it puts you in that vibration. Um, but pride and all those things can also get you in a lot of trouble because if you're a lower vibration person, you you up yourself to courage and pride, but you're still an angry, bitter motherfucker. So now what you try to do? Fight everybody? Or you were sad, grief, depressed, or whatever, and you drank, that raised your vibration up to um, courage. Now you feel better about your situation, you're like, oh, this is gonna be better. But you're still a low vibrator, so now you're crying, and you're just all depressed, like, you know, right? You see how, how alcohol affects different people? That's not your chemistry, that's your vibrational scale. If you're a happy motherfucker and you drink, you're gonna go down. You're gonna move down, and like, you're probably gonna make some dumb decisions or do something stupid that you normally would not do, but you're not gonna be like a fighter. You're not gonna be angry. You're not gonna be mad at the world. You're probably just gonna vibrate somewhere up in here, right? Not every case is the same. I'm not saying this is like a blanket possible policy or anything, but this is just how it affects a lot of people. And so I started examining that. I started realizing the same thing with coffee, same thing with all these different things. Like, yes, they were raising my vibration. Yes, that's great. But then they started to become a slave to them. I needed them to raise my vibration. Now I'm instilling limiting beliefs in myself saying, I'm not as creative as I could be if I didn't have marijuana. Or I'm not, I won't have a good live if I don't drink a cup of coffee. You know, I'll be too boring on live if I don't have coffee in me. Well now I'm not Rob the Planner or the cool guy who's like making shit happen, I'm a, I'm a cup of coffee. And that's weird, right? And so you really have to understand, back to what I was talking about, I, I'm, I'm at joy and I'm at light and at peace, I'm at love. I smoke weed, it actually brings me down the vibrational scale. It actually brings me down. And I've actually been feeling that lately. Like over the last like two or three months, I've been smoking every day because that's just what I do. And I'd be like, how come I can't get high? Lately, I've not been able to get stoned. I smoke dabs. I smoke the best. I'm in Los Angeles. I smoke the best top shelf weed they got. And then I'd just be like, oh, it's not doing it like it used to, man. Like, I don't know, just, it's just not doing it like it used to. And I never, I could not figure out why. Started studying, started learning more, and I started realizing, like, this weed wasn't helping me. It used to, but now it's just a habit. And now every time I smoke, I'm just, like, less excited to do my work. You know, come, like, I've learned to beat, beat it till about 2 or 3 in the afternoon, but then about 2 or 3 in the afternoon, all that weed that I've been smoking all day starts to, like, change my vibrational scale. And I'm, all of a sudden, I'm tired. And I just kind of want to relax. Right? Like, that, now you're content. Now you don't want to do anything. You don't want to go anywhere. You don't want to be anything. You just want to relax. You know? And I don't care who, whatever people say about, oh, well, weed doesn't make you lazy or anything like that. No, it doesn't. You're right. It's all about your mindset when you're on that. But it will, I personally think, lower that vibration, um, whether you think it is or not. Same thing, like I said, if I'm vibrating at a certain scale and I just dump a fifth of, of liquor into me, it's gonna change the way I'm vibrating, just facts. And so, that's why I said I, I had to change my relationship with that, you know? If I change my relationship with all these substances, it's okay to use them. Sometimes you're gonna need that boost of energy or sometimes you're gonna need that boost of positivity or that boost of con contentment, whatever. Like something really, really bad is gonna happen. You're gonna be like, yo, we need to go get a joint, dude. Like, I'm stressed the fuck out. Like, we need to sit down and smoke, maybe think of a solution to this. And I just can't think of a solution right now because I'm just too anxious and wound up about this. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Like, that, that honestly gets me thinking, like maybe that's what Earth intended that plant for. I, I did a lot of studying that just changed my whole thought process, but I'm just gonna keep it on the vibrational scale. If you wanna know more, if y'all are interested, hit me up, and then maybe I'll do like a whole live on like all the different things I came across with like marijuana and like the reasons why I'm like kind of cutting back on that. Same thing with like alcohol. Um, all these things that you hear that people do when they're like raising their vibration, right? Like when people are starting to move to a new conscious level, you hear this all the time. I start, you gotta chill with the caffeine, me too, bro. Me too, bro, 1,050%. Sometimes I feel like I can't go to the gym if I'm not hyped. Like if I don't have pre-workout or if I don't have a gym, like something, my workout's gonna suck. You don't wanna be there, because what if you don't have coffee? Right, then what? Then what you gonna be like? You don't wanna be a slave to those things. So today, you have full control, baby, on your vibration, where you land at on the scale, and what I want you to do right now is I want you to spend some time and assess where am I at on the scale? Like what do you naturally feel? It's, it's, it takes a little bit of thought, but you will know. Like I said, I knew, I know immediately I'm love, joy, I'm right there, and I'm not peace. I knew, I, I, you gotta be honest with yourself, you can't just like, I'm light as fuck. Yep, totally, totally. I heard everything around the town, I'm totally light. Yeah, nah, son, lies. 
But you know, I was like, I'm joy, I'm, ha I'm love. Nine times out of 10, that's as high as I can get. I can never find peace because peace for me is on the other side of all of my dreams. Like I have to go out into the world and manifest this Rod the Planner thing for me to find my ultimate peace. I just know that, that's just true. That's just the burden that I've been given, right? We're all going on a journey to enlightenment. You know, just wake up and be enlightened. But it's a journey, you have to start taking steps, you have to start moving towards that way. And so that's what me now, is like, if I want more peace in my life, I'm like looking for peace now, and I identify this because I still have so much of that desire that keeps me from peace, that now I'm like, okay, let go of some of those desires. It's okay to be ambitious, but don't be a slave to your fucking ambitions here, guy. Like, it's okay to be today, too. It's okay to be just Sherrod Sloan. That's okay, like there's nothing wrong with Sherrod Sloan, guy. Like there's nothing wrong with being me. There's nothing wrong with just coming out here and serving you coffee every day if that's what you know my life ends up being. You just gotta understand that like you know you're okay. You're 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 more than enough just the way you were. The universe did not birth you into existence and then put a cup of coffee in your hand or give you a cigarette or you know pump you full of weed. And be like well you know you didn't come out there and your mom they didn't be like the doctor wasn't like well make sure you you give your kid plenty of marijuana because they're not gonna be okay. They don't grow without it. It doesn't, you know, your body doesn't work. And like, none of that. You're perfectly, perfectly fine exactly the way you are. Exactly the way you are. Exactly in the place that you are onto your journeys. I, bro, I feel it, Mark. I feel it on you all the time, bro. Because I'm you. I'm you, bro. I'm you. Look at yourself. Like, you are a masterpiece, right? And I don't know what your goals are, but I just know that you work extremely hard every single day and you put out amazing vibes every single day, just like I do. You gotta get to a point where you understand that that's it. You're doing your job. Now just be patient and let the universe do its job, right? But you can't put that frustration into it and that like, oh, well, it's still so difficult and I'm not making it, you know? And like, I feel it on you, bro. We're working through the same things. And I think it does come with a little bit of like letting go of some of those caffeine and some of that other stuff that makes us feel so like, oh, like we gotta, like we gotta, you know, get it, get it, get it. So. Um, but experiment with that guy today. Really just look and think, like what's my natural, am I a stressed person? Am I a sad person? Like do I, do I get upset at everything? Like, any, like things happen in the world and I'm sad about it and then things happen to other people in my life and I'm sad about it, you know, or whatever. Like then you're probably vibrating at that sadness or some kind of like lower emotion. And then think about where do I want to vibrate? Do you want to be all the way in enlightenment? Some people don't care. Albert Einstein didn't give a fuck about enlightenment. He just wanted reasoning. And he wanted the best reason he could possibly have, so that's what he went for. Some people want to be drunks. You know, they just want it, like they just want to numb the pain. And they're just okay with being courageous or whatever they are, so they just drink all the time, and that's their vibration. Right? Decide where you are and where you want to be and start moving up or down. But understand that everything you do, everything you are, is constantly pushing you up and down this scale. And you can tighten that. I mean, you can tighten it as tight as you want. I told you, mine are like three or four, right here at the top. On my worst of worst days, I'm like right here. That's a great place to be. Like, anyone who's wondering, like, man, I always seem to be in a good mood, or always be getting, nah, not really. Sometimes I'm not as good as I want to be, but even on my worst day, I'm still pretty fucking good. But that's just because I've worked so hard to get to this little area, and I don't let myself fall any lower. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't experience shame. I definitely don't fucking experience shame. Like, fuck that, like, fuck that. Well, fuck, I'll bust my dick out right now on this live. Like, you know what I mean? I don't fuck with that shit. Like, we are, we are okay. You're okay. I love you so much. Thank you for hanging out. I told you this was gonna be an extremely powerful talk. Do check this one out on the YouTube. If you haven't checked them out on the YouTube before, I highly encourage you, just give them a look, just see what the difference is. Maybe you'd be more of a fan of watching them on YouTube than watching them live. I don't know. But I know I'll be here on all of these. No matter where you go, you're gonna find me doing this. I love y'all so much.